Hello and welcome to Park Life on the Road as we take a look ahead to Exeter City's preparation for Saturday's away game at Mansfield Town. What we all want to know is how the team is shaping up for the game. We caught up with manager Matt Taylor to see how the preparations are going. We go there with the confidence of the, the soul for the way performance um, and knowing that it's, it's down to the home team to make the, the running in the game. Um, but we've got to perform better than we did last weekend. Like I said previously this week, um, we felt Saturday was a below par performance as a collective, but too many individuals were just off the game as well. Um, so we're looking for a little bit of a response to that, that home performance against Port Vale. Um, we know what, what, a, what a challenge it is when we go to Mansfield, um, irrelevant of the crowd being there or not. Um, and, and both teams start to the season. We know they're, they're one of the, the early season favourites because they've got a certain set of players of a certain standard. So um, it's a game to, to relish and a game to look forward to. Um, unfortunately, we missed the, the, the friendly game on Tuesday um, due to that being called off. So um, we're not short of match minutes, as I say, but we're, we're certainly short of match practice. Um, and we've had a good week's training on the training pitch and try to replicate and, and reintroduce some bodies into the group. Um, so the squad will certainly be stronger. How much has the, the later Orient coronavirus positive test had an impact on, on your training, obviously, because they played Mansfield last weekend. We were waiting on the results from Mansfield this week. I mean, has that had an impact on your preparations at all? No, no impact on our preparations. Um, obviously, I presume it affected Mansfield in terms of getting tested again, having to wait for their results. Um, we just carried on as business as, as usual, really. Um, we saw the news in relation to Leighton Orient and we, we knew Mansfield played them last weekend. Um, so that, that time of uncertainty, certainly for Mansfield, must have been worrying for those players and, and we hope they've all come through that safely. And, and the same for that, that, that big group of positive tests at, at Leighton Orient. Um, our, our well wishes go out to, to that club as well. Um, but it just shows that what a dangerous time it is for, for everyone, let alone footballers, um, staff and, and, and family members as well. And we're trying to provide as safe an environment as possible. But it's been very much business as usual this week. Um, we've trained well, the group have trained well. Um, we've We've just tried to remind them of their responsibility as, as employees to keep themselves as safe as they possibly can um, and try and restrict the moments they get put into a, a potential uh, infectious environment. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's, there's lots of positions and, and environments you can't control yourself um, individually and collectively. So a little reminder in terms of the group, in terms of their responsibilities um, and to follow the regulations as the best they possibly can. Um, but we, we, we go up to Mansfield um, with a clean bill of health um, and a lot more fit and ready players. One player who's impressed since making his league debut for Exeter City a couple of weeks ago is defender Josh Key. We caught up with him to see how he's settling in with the trials and tribulations of League Two football. And you've achieved what any young lad in the academy wants to achieve, and that's to make it into the first team. We saw your first goal as well against Forest Green. How are you finding your, your first couple of weeks as a League Two footballer? Yeah, I mean, I'm loving it, but it's, it is also very... It's a very competitive environment, but and it's every every lad like young lads dream to be a footballer. So um, yeah, I'm just sort of enjoying the moment for as long as I can, and yeah, gonna just try and keep pushing and stay stay in this position for as long as I can. And I mean, when Caprice is back, we'll I'll yeah, and I'll have something to compete, someone to compete with as well. So um, yeah, see how it goes, and um, just keep trying to do my best really, because we've got a lot of players with a lot of quality in the team. So. Um, if I can try and keep my place for as long as I can, really. Do you think having someone like Jake, who's an experienced player in the league, to compete against him, do you, do you expect that will make you a better player as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Jake's a very good player. You've seen that, even though he's he's had a had an injury. You've seen that in the first month of him being here. But um, yeah, he's good. He, he he gives me advice on little things. He as I said, all the other players do as well. They're, they're constantly saying, oh, Josh, I mean, you could have done this better or well done. That, that was good. Um, and so, yeah, thankfully, I've got a, a group of lads around me who support me and encourage me, but also know how to tell me when I'm, I need to do things better. So, um, yeah, it, as the thing about Jake, yeah, he, he, it's good composition, as you said, but he's awesome a teammate as well. So whether he plays or I play, we want the best for the team at the end of the day. You know what he's like on the pitch, but what about off it? Josh is also first up in our Getting to Know You feature. So you're quite from a musical family and, and your sister's in a band. So, I mean, we'll give them a plug. Get, get the City fans listening to them. Yeah, so um, they're called Wildwood Kin. Um, go and check them out. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know how to describe their music, but they're sort of uh, Americana, indie kind of. They're not not too poppy, but it's it's a good listen. Um, they're a massive support for things like mental health. Um, they support that um, massively. But um, yeah, it would, it would really help them out because of obviously COVID. Things like income for them has been um, a huge struggle. So it would massively help them out if people could go and, um, I don't know, buy their album or they've, they've got, a, 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 I don't know, like a, a live session coming up in the next few months um, where people can tune in. So if someone can... If, some of the fans could tune into that and support them. That would, that would uh, yeah, help help them and help me out a lot. We will make sure that we uh, post about that on our social media if we can. Uh, yeah, thank you. So staying on on the music theme, who's your your favourite artist at the moment? That's a tough one. Um, I like a lot of eighty stuff. That's my problem. I like old music, but don't we all? Don't we all? Yeah. Um, hmm. I'll just have, I mean, my go-to is always Stevie Wonder. I love Stevie Wonder, so that'll be that one. And we've been hearing from a lot of the lads that you've got a fairly good voice. And I know you've said before we started this that you won't sing for us, but what's your go-to song? I mean, on my initiation, as I said, I I sung um, You Give Me Something by uh, James Morrison, because I thought, yeah, it's it's quite, it suits my voice a bit. but yeah, that's that's probably my go-to sing song. Um, yeah, that'd be it. So from music to football, then, which is obviously easiest for you to talk about. Growing up, who was your inspiration as a footballer? Who did you look up to? I uh, looked up to uh, Ryan Giggs. He's been a, a a fan of Man United. My dad was a George Best fan, so he supported Man United. Um, yeah, with uh, the Fergie. Fergie era, um, yeah, Ryan Giggs was my favourite, and he, he managed to watch us play against Salford, so um, that was a good experience. Having him watch you must have been amazing, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. What about in the team? Who's your best friend? Uh, it'd be Kite, Harry Kite. Um, <laughs> we, yeah, we do a lot of stuff together, so um, yeah, it'd be Kitey. On to some more of the the more random ones now. What's your your go to food if you were to cook for someone or to cook for yourself what do you usually make i mean i'm not i'm not the best cook um but i think my go-to would just be something like a, a pasta bake i just you can't beat pasta it's it's an elite sort of food really tea or coffee coffee yeah coffee Love coffee. cats or dogs dogs all day are you much of a reader do you, do you have a favorite book um not a huge read? reader but nah, I couldn't think of any off my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I put some of these questions to, to the girls, one of the girls in the office, and she said she wants to know what's your favourite sandwich? That's a good question, actually. You know, my go-to is pretty boring, but it's just a uh, ham and coleslaw or cheese and pickle, actually. Yeah. And, and I think we're all in need of a holiday after this year. Where, where's your favourite holiday destination or all your dream destination? <laughs> My dream destination for a holiday would be Fiji. Why not? Why not? Just it looks really nice. And what about where yeah. you where you've already been? Where's where's the best place you've been? Uh, you know, it's, it's a weird one, but I actually um, I went to Israel once, and I mean they don't. I think social media doesn't do it too much justice, but some of the landscapes and sort of things you find there is amazing it was so hot I've, i'm not very good with heat but yeah that was i've, I've heard tel aviv's a bit of a party city as well so <laughs> yeah yeah maybe, was, maybe, that, maybe yeah. that can go on the list for one day for me yeah maybe that's that's all of them mate is it thank cool you. thank you so much um, no problem do you remember the score the last time mansfield next to faced each other well don't worry i'm not putting you on the spot but one man who does is will barrett uh, the club historian, and he takes a look back at some previous encounters with the Stags. City's first trip to Mansfield came way back in 1931, where the Grecians were defeated 3-1 at the Field Mill. City turned the tide for the Stags' visit to the park later that season, when Billy McDevitt's side won 3-0 in the old 3rd Division South. Overall, City have the historical edge over our opponents this weekend, winning 25, drawing 18 and losing only 18 of our 65 historical encounters. 
In more recent history, over the last five matches, Mansfield have the edge with seven goals to five. But in terms of results, the sides can't be split with two wins apiece and a draw. Our last game against Mansfield was over a year ago now on August the 31st 2019 where the Grecians ran out 1-0 winners as Ryan Bowman latched onto a quick throw from Dean Moxie to hammer the ball home to take all three points. Both clubs looking for their first win in Skybet League 2 this season. It is sure to be a fascinating encounter once again at the One Call Stadium. Oh, it is the one cool stadium as well. Yeah, it is. Mike, I know we're busy. Yeah. But uh, what are you thinking about Saturday, Mansfield away? How do you think that one's Well, I'm glad go? it's on because it was in danger, wasn't it? Because of the Leighton Orient thing with them all going down with the Lurgy. Um, it's going to be a tough one. You know, we've had a, we knew it was going to be a tough start anyway at the beginning. And um, psychologically, I think the lads, I think they're capable of it, but they do have to lift themselves a bit, I think because I'm getting the feeling after the first two games that the empty stadiums are affecting them. So. so what are you spelling out here? We've got F and I. So, yeah, F, I, the next letter's S. So all you at home. Is it Fisher? Oh, <laughs> it is, it is Fisher. That's pretty good, that, that, yeah, that's good. Got you on that one, so. Who, by the way, has got a very interesting goal gift, which hopefully we'll see this season. Has he? So, are you a fan of The Office, Mike? The original office. The original office? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Then you'll recognise it. Oh really? So keep an eye okay. Out. So yeah, keep an yeah. eye out. For, no, uh, so that's that, that'll do me. It's gonna be a tough one. What score what score prediction are you going for? If we're tight at the back and we don't let any in, I think it I think we'll nick it one nil. But if we do let one in, uh, I think we'll raise the game and we'll probably go for three one. So my prediction Three for City, one for them. As they're at home, one okay. for them, three for us, unlucky for Mansfield. But we know on a Saturday morning for a trip to Mansfield, you'd usually be getting up early, getting showered, getting your club colours on to go to the game. And we know how hard it is that you can't be with us at the games at the moment this season. And it's important we talk to each other about how we're feeling, especially in times like this, um, when you might be isolated from friends and family. But talk, talk to your friends, talk to your family and your fellow, fellow City supporters about how you're feeling. We know it's difficult. Um, but anyway, we caught up with, with Pete Furley from the CCT about how they are tackling loneliness uh, across the city at the moment. I'm the Health and Wellbeing Officer and my role is to go out into the community and help promote physical activity uh, and support people with some mental wellbeing projects as well. So we're very pleased to have got the Sporting Memories project back up and running back at St James Park. So we're meeting once a week with some of our members, doing some face-to-face -face stuff. We have been doing Zoom meetings, which is good, but not as good as actually face-to-face -face stuff. So we're very pleased to have that back. We are now back into our fourth week of our Man V Fat football programme, the weight loss programme for men. Um, so we've been getting 50, 60 players coming along on a Friday night at the training ground, playing some football. It's done them a power of good just to get back out again and, and playing football and mixing. Uh, we've restarted our Covenant Fund project for ex-armed forces people. So they're coming in again on, on, to St James Park to meet in one of our, uh, in a, in one of our COVID-19 secure rooms. Um, and now we are looking at a project in conjunction with the EFL Trust called Tackling Loneliness Together, where we are wanting to contact fans uh, who may be feeling a bit lonely. We can give them a phone call. We can do some set up a pen pal scheme. We're going to be looking at some social distancing walks from uh, from the stadium. So we're um, we're very keen to engage with the community, connect with the community, and get people back out. Um, and also could actually give them a chance to talk about what they're feeling, what their fears are, and hopefully try and give them a bit of reassurance. I mean, if anyone's interested in, you know, first step, finding out a bit more, or just getting involved in any of this, what's the best way? It's on our website, but it'll be, all the details will be flashed up on the screen in one moment. Uh, please just contact me or any bit, member of our CC team, and we can, uh, we can get you the information and hopefully get you along to one of our sessions, either virtually or face-to-face. On Tuesday evening in our fans forum, we put your questions to Matt Taylor and the City's three summer signings. In case you missed it, here it is. Cheers.
Levi asks, what has been your most memorable game in charge of City and your most memorable game as a player? Um, well, my first game in charge, home to Carlisle, was, was memorable. Um, and then in that season, we went away to Notts County um, and played the majority of that game with 10 men. And Nicky Law somehow, I say, scored a header. I think it came off his nose in the 96th minute um, to give us a 1-0 victory. That was incredible um, in terms of that performance and celebrating on the pitch at the end with our, our away fans. Um, and then obviously the, the home game against Plymouth last season was a big highlight. Um, but their, their, their moments in a, so far, an enjoyable couple of years for the club. And hopefully there's a few more moments to come. Um, was the other one as a player? Yeah. Uh, well, Wembley would have been top of the list. Um, Wembley, Rotherham, um, and then those fixtures in League One. Um, home and away to Leeds and all the big clubs in that, in that League One season. So, some memorable times. Um, but like I say, it's, a, it's a, the group of players in, in front of us um, and on the screen tonight. They're hopefully going to make some good memories in the future. Another one here for you as well. I mean, I don't know how you're going to take some tactical advice here, but uh, Paul asks, have you ever thought of trying Randall Williams as a central striker alongside Ryan Bowman? He's good in the air and pace breaking the lines would cause defenders plenty of problems. Yeah, definitely. We've thought about it. Um, we've, we've looked at it the odd time in training, um, but Rands is a is an out-and-out winger um, and he doesn't like bodies behind him, if that makes sense. Um, and centre-halves would, would certainly target Randell to a certain extent. So it all depends where their space is on the football pitch. Um, unfortunately, and, and you probably saw it the weekend, Port Vale showed us a lot of respect, respect and, and took away a lot of our attacking space on that football pitch. Um, so it's up to us to create space um, and get our attacking players in the ball in, in, in certainly in those moments and hopefully they can hurt the opposition. So Randell, you know, we've we got no qualms. I think he was leading assist maker last season um, for the whole lower league football. Um, but he only scored four goals. Um, so we want a greater goal return from Randell Williams um, whilst he's here with us. Uh, and hopefully he can do that this season. Thank you. A uh, question for Rory, Jake and Lewis here. Um, Tom would like to know who each of your idol was growing up. Whoever wants to go first, Cam. Go on, I'll go. Um, mine was uh, Ashley Cole and Leighton Baines. Um, both for different reasons. Ashley Cole was a 1v1 defender, was probably the best out there. And then Leighton Baines, free kicks, crosses and assists and stuff was just top draw. And those both in the England squad as well. So. Did you do anything in the free kick locker? I try. I <laughs> uh, can't promise anything, but I try. How about yourself, Jake? Uh, mine was probably Steven Gerrard. Um, obviously, growing up, coming through the youth team, I actually played centre midfield, so um, mine was actually probably Steven Gerrard at the time. And Rory? Um, a bit of an older one. Paige, you, you might not remember. Um, uh, Des Walker, um, when I was younger, I used to go to a lot of the Sheffield Wednesday games, so um, Des Walker was, was playing at the back then and just used to coast through games, make it look easy. And, um, obviously, I had a, had a good career playing for England and stuff, so yeah, Des Walker. I guess we should send that to Matt as well, really. Question? Yeah, who was your idol growing up? I don't know if these boys know this, but I was a goalkeeper growing up, so you know, Schmeichel was a, a hero of mine, um, but being a United fan, it was a, a Cantona era, so Schmeichel and Cantona, um, and then the, probably the, the class of 92 coming through. Um, some outstanding players. I was lucky enough, to, similar to Rory to a certain extent, and um, the family had season tickets at United. So I, I watched some good players for a certain amount of time. Um, and that's one thing we miss in terms of working in football. You don't really see the team you support as much as everyone else, I'm afraid. Another one for you, Matt, as well. Um, Vinny says, the club has done a great, a quite remarkable job in setting up, quite frankly, the most fruitful youth system in the Football League. But as a manager of the club, does it become frustrating to see these talented players move on and you know, how much would you love to see them in the in the squad? Yeah, look, I think I've, made, I've said publicly time and time again, um, I've got no qualms about players moving on once they play for our first team and, and have success within our first team. Um, the ones which hurt the most, um, not just for myself, but for the, the academy and, and the supporters, are the ones who leave us um, before we get to work with them in terms of the first team environment, but even get them on the pitch within the first team environment as well. So the ones who leave us at 15, 16, um, before the fans have got to see them, um, before we've had time and the proper time to work with them and develop them. And then they go into a, an academy structure. Um, they, they, they go as first team players, but they go in within an academy structure where there's just so many players um, and they're no longer seen as, as the examples and the ones to work with and develop um, and the ones who are of value to that football club. So we, we fight as hard as we possibly can to keep these players. Um, but ultimately, the, the draw of, of the bigger clubs always comes at some point. 
Um, and that is one drawback um, in terms of the way our academy works. It's, it's the price of success, in all honesty. Um, but it, it's also, we speak about reflection on the club. Financially, we still get the benefits of players leaving us at 16. But we'd, we, we would definitely get a, a better financial value out of these players if we get them within the first team environment, get them under a professional contract and then sell them once they've, they've had success with us. Um, hence why the Ollie Watkins situation or the Ollie Watkins scenario or example is, is absolutely key to any young players wanting to, to progress and develop within our environment. Thanks, Matt. Um, Rory, question for you. Um, you're, you're part of a, well, at the moment, a totally new backline this year. I mean, how, how old do you think you're getting on together and do you feel like you've gel, you're starting to gel? Yeah, I think so. Um, as you said, it's, it's always a new experience to, to play with new lads and find out each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, but as I sort of Paige said, we, we've all sort of, settled on settled in really quickly which I think helps um, you spend a lot of time with each other on and off the pitch so I think um, not to sound too too sort of selfish but I think from a defensive point of view I think it's important that that all the defensive lads sort of get on on and off the pitch because th- th- there's going to be times when um, you're going to have to have each other's back on the pitch and I think if, you, if you've got that sort of good good spirit and, 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 and that good friendship um, you'll just push each other that little bit more and make sure that everyone's um, performing to, 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 to the highest possible standards. Thank you. Uh, Lewis, another for you here. Um, so Dan asks, um, says, as a player who many fans agree has the talent to be playing at a higher level, how much of a draw was it that Exeter has such a good reputation for developing talent to be playing higher up in the pyramid? Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, I've obviously seen players uh, move on from Exeter and obviously push on and obviously do well at the club. Um, I played against Ollie Watkins a few years ago um, from the 21s at West Ham and we played uh, Exeter in the Cup. Uh, and I think there was quite a few young lads that played that day and we actually struggled that day and I thought, well, these look good. So that, that stayed in my mind. Um, and obviously, yeah, I want to play at the highest level possible but it would be nice to do it with Exeter and Hopefully we can go up this year. That's got to be the main aim and target. So hopefully we can all do it together. Hopefully. Um, this next one is quite a long one. So bear with me, um, I guess. I think it probably aimed at Matt, but I mean, anyone can answer. I'll do my best of it. Um, so it says, Exit City are down to travel in excess of 10,000 miles on the road this season. I'm sure you guys knew that before you signed. Um, if the bottom two tiers of the EFL were merged and divided into regionalised sections, north and south, the savings in travel would be significant. Uh, given a precise geographical split, the new northern division would travel 96,000 miles and southern 129, which would save 115,000 miles overall. goes on a bit longer than this, I'm afraid. The benefits are clear. Saving on travel costs would help offset the reduction in gate revenue. Less travel would bring a measure of relief to law travelling fans. Close proximity to fellow clubs means more derby games and the increased income and interest they bring. And we shouldn't forget the benefits to the planet in reducing carbon emissions. Very important. Uh, the change would be simple to accomplish, apparently. Uh, simply altered fixtured lists for next season and a bit of tinkering with promotion and relegation structure. I mean, just take it up with the FL, Matt, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's, it's a great question and, and really well worded. Um, it's, it's not our decision um, and it's certainly not our decision to support um, aspects in, in relation to that. We, we want the local derbies and we want the lo- more local fixtures. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of Exeter City fans on the call tonight or, or even back at home who enjoy travelling away. Uh, and that's part and parcel of that social network we spoke about. And some of the most memorable games and memorable journeys are the ones which are the ones furthest away. Um, I did know that stat about the, the 10,000 miles. I think someone tweeted something that um, we could probably get to Moscow and, and back. <laughs> Um, and that was a less distance than what we're actually going to travel this season, which is an incredible stat. But that's, that's all part and parcel of it. Um, we are where we are in terms of Southwest. Um, we all enjoy living down here. The lads have alluded to that already. Um, and travelling is part and parcel of our, our daily work. Um, and certainly every other weekend, we're, we're a long way away from home. Um, it usually means a, a long journey on the coach, training on the way up, and then a hotel stay as well. So the costs are obviously important in relation to the football club, um, but it's all budgeted. Um, and... Um, that's that's part of being a professional footballer. It's, it's a national league. Um, I can see why lower leagues, such as uh, the national league, um, have split into a north and south below the Premier Division. Um, but leagues, leagues, low, lower league football are national leagues, and hopefully they'll remain that way. That's all for today's first edition of Park Life on the Road. We hope you've enjoyed it, and hope you continue to enjoy what we've got coming up for you throughout the season. 
Anyway, a couple of last things to say as we're about to hit the road. Come on, city.